So in this presentation, I want to take just a, a final pass and look at some of the details of some of the assets that we're using. Um, the first thing that I want to point out is that I did kind of de-intensify my, my shadows a little bit on my, my light. Now remember, I re renamed my directional light sunlight. And if I select that sunlight, I did change the color a little bit. I took down the default intensity. I set this to hard, hard shadows and I reduced the strength of the hard shadows because my, my shadows were very, very dark to begin with and I reduced those shadows quite a bit. So I, I did make a quick pass to lighting. I'm gonna to continue to, to um, apply, create and apply materials so that I, I'm not looking at the default materials uh, for each object in my scene. In addition to that, if I select my sphere, not a bad idea to rename my sphere at this point, but if I focus on my different components, I can, I can adjust some of the, the, the parameters of my rigid body. I have mass drag, so if I want this ball to act heavier or lighter, I can do that by influencing the mass number. In addition to that, I've assigned the force script to my, my sphere. This is the thing that's allowing me to control the sphere left or right. If I look at the sphere, or excuse me, if I look at the script, there is a public variable called the force and it's set to 10. Well, if I wanna change that, this is the amount of force that's being applied when I use my A and D keys or my arrow keys. And if I just bump that up, I can change that value, say to 15 or 20. And now my sphere might be even a little more responsive. There's more force being used, okay? So I can dial in and tweak that, that value of the force. Now, if I double click on that script, and I can do that by either identifying the link here that says force zero one and double click on that link or I can go find the actual script itself in the project window. If I double click on that, it's gonna open up in MonoDevelop. Now, if I take a look at that, just remind you that, that I've declared this variable called the force is equal to 10. That's what we're seeing here when I select my sphere and I look over here this value it defaults to 10 but i can change that value and bump it up or bump it down in addition to that if i go back to my force script uh, we we have a couple of different things that are happening in the script as i mentioned we have a, what's called a function fixed update and the fixed update what it's saying is that every time the screen redraws inside of our game execute whatever function is inside uh, the update and the function that, that we're asking for is to translate character controller, that's user input, and apply the user input to uh, our axes, our horizontal and our vertical axes. Uh, currently our vertical axes, if we look at vertical, it's multiplying by a value of zero. If I look over at the horizontal axis, that's left and right, it's, a, it's multiplying by the value of the force, which happens to be this value up here, whatever value we put in, that's a variable. Uh, so that variable can be really any number. This vertical axis, if we wanted to, instead of saying zero, we can wipe that out and type in the force, and then we can move the ball in the foreground and the background. And then we also have this value of fire one, which is, which is our mouse click. So that's what's happening inside the script. It's exposing a public variable called the force, and that public variable, when we select the sphere, it's available to manipulate the, the force at which we're, we're, uh, we're, we're influencing our sphere, okay? We, we've taken a look at all the, different, all the different aspects of the basic rigid body or the basic physics properties with inside Unity. And then I'm going to continue to work on my game, as I'll encourage you to, based on what we know and, and we'll, ex we'll continue to experiment. Make sure that you make a pass, make some design decisions about the, the, the materials in your game, uh, the physical layout of your game. I'm gonna push mine forward, but once we're done, once we decide that we have a game that we wanna submit, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the build process. So for the build process, what you wanna do is make sure that you've saved your current work. So I'll do a quick file save scene. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna go to file, build settings, now I could choose build and run, but the best bet, I prefer to do build settings. So file, build settings. Now what comes up is the build settings window. And what we're looking at here is the opportunity to build for different platforms. By default, we're looking at PC and Mac and Linux standalone builds. We could build for the web. We could build for iOS and Android and Xbox and so on. But we're gonna focus 
In this class, on builds for Mac and PC. Now, in order to submit this assignment, we want two different builds. We want a build for Mac and a build for PC, and we want both of those submitted to the discussion board. So in order to build for Mac and PC, we need to select PC, Mac, and Linux builds. We can choose our target platform. So the first build that I'll do is I'll build for Mac OS X. I'm gonna leave the architecture at by 86. I'm not worried about a development build. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the build button. And when I do, it asks me where I wanna save this build. And by default, it's saving into the Gravity Lab. Now that's a, that's a great place to save your builds. In fact, I would take it even one step farther and inside your Gravity Lab project, I would make a builds folder and save it there. But for now, for the sake of the demo, I'm gonna to build to the desktop because I wanna I want to show you what, what Unity spits out during the build process. So I'll change this to desktop and I'm gonna call this bill W. I'll call this glab01. Might even throw in an underscore and call this Mac. So I have my name on the front end. I have the project that I'm working on, the version number, and what platform it's for. Okay, so follow that naming convention or some variation of it. Okay, I might even throw in an underscore between my first name, the project file, and the platform that I'm working on, and I'll hit the save button. Now when I do, uh, Unity will make a build of the project. You see that it's saved out on the desktop here. This is a standalone application that I, I can run. I don't need Unity to run this on my Mac. I've just built a Mac projector file or, or an executable file. And if I just give that a double click, I'll be confronted with a little splash screen here that asks me how large I want to run this, whether I want to run it in a window or not. I'll choose windowed. I'll run it at a good graphics quality and I'll hit the play button. So now here's my, here's my game. It's loading. And there it goes. So I have a, a standalone build. This is gonna, this is going to be a little more responsive than it running inside Unity. So we're going to get better results uh, running inside our build. So that's just kind of a work in progress of my game at this point. I'll go back to Unity and I'll build one more time for Windows. Now, but before I do, I want to point out that when you build for Mac, it builds one file and all of the assets are bundled within that one file. Okay. So the next thing that I'll do is I'm going to go back to Unity. I'm going to say file build settings that'll bring up the build settings window this time around I'll choose windows and I'll choose to build and I'll build in the same location I'll build to the desktop and I'll use that same naming convention which is my first name I'll throw in my last initial as well underscore name of the project in this case it's glab version 01 and I'll choose underscore PC just to include the um, the platform and I'll save this to the desktop now when we when we build a PC we're gonna have a couple of different assets we're gonna get the dot exe file so we'll get the executable file but in addition to that we'll also get the data file that needs to travel that needs to travel with uh, the project itself you have both Mac and PC builds in place, it's important that you zip these before you post them to the discussion board. Um, particularly the, the um, particularly the PC uh, uh, the PC build and the, and the process that I'll go through on the Mac on um, the PC you're gonna have to work through the process on your own. Just do a quick Google search if you don't know how to compress or zip anything. But on the Mac side of things, you can um, just right click and choose to compress uh, the file that you're working on. So we'll give that a quick compress. And now I have my zipped Mac version and I can tell what it is based on uh, the name. Now for the PC version, what I'm gonna recommend that you do is you create a folder. Uh, we'll call this first name underscore glab, same naming convention. We'll put a version number on it, underscore PC. The underscores are, are optional. Um, but I'll throw both the .exe file and the data file into a folder. I'll right click on it and choose to compress. So now I have both versions, the Mac and the PC version uh, set for, um, uh, that have been zipped. And I'll just jump into Blackboard really quickly. I'll go to the discussion board and I'll go to the dedicated discussion board for this project. As if the discussion board loads, there we go. I'll go to Project One Gravity Lab, 
and I'll create a thread and I'll call this Bill's WIP that's work in progress and maybe I'll even call it work in progress one and I'll browse my computer for attachments. Now this project is is going to be fairly small so I should be able to attach both uh, the max zip I'll open and I'll browse my computer for another maybe okay it looks like I can only attach one using this method um, alternatively I should be able to choose an attachment inside the thread and if I need to do two different threads that's that's just fine so let me try this I'll try to open and I'll submit that as an attachment And once I get those attachments set, I'll, I'll submit. So it looks like I, I'm, I'm only able to attach one at a time, so that's fine. I'll say uh, uh, bills, I'll call this uh, Mac, work in progress number one, and I'll submit that. And it'll take a moment for it to submit. I can see it uploading down here. And once that's done, I'll either reply to the current thread and attach the PC zip, uh, to the same thread. So maybe I won't bother creating a new thread um, and I'll attach my, my PC zip. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to continue to play with uh, build out my, my project. And then as I make a final product, I'll, I'll zip both those and publish those to the discussion board. So have fun with the project. Uh, if you have any questions, post them directly to the discussion board. Uh, make sure you post uh, uh, one, at least one work in progress before you finish the project and post the final. And uh, if you have any questions, post them in the discussion board. So have fun, and uh, we'll catch up in the next project.